Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel, The Immigration Gurus. This is Jitendra Grover, Research Scholar, ATS Motel, Canada. So in this video, I am sharing the caps notes again. I have recently made a video on caps notes uh, uh, by showing so many caps notes where uh, the content of the caps notes were, was quite similar. Uh, I am having similar type of caps notes here, but uh, the topic today is a little bit different. So today I am sharing and showing that uh, uh, when people trust caps notes uh, so much but there are so many errors there are so many mistakes in the caps notes as well and uh, i usually don't trust caps notes uh, for taking my decisions my decisions are not based or never based on the caps notes uh, there may be some exceptional scenarios where uh, there is some some exceptional thing like uh, visa officer has mentioned uh, something related to to some genuineness of your profile or some document or something like that. So that is an exceptional scenario. But in routine refusal cases, uh, there is nothing special in the caps notes. And um, many times I have already said that uh, many times these caps notes are quite uh, uh, confusing. They can uh, uh, they can actually distract you from the right thing and. Uh, you can choose the wrong thing uh, uh, by following the caps notes. So most of the time it is like uh, whatever program you are choosing is is incorrect, uh, that uh, that doesn't have any progression, it is not relevant, and all those things are already, uh, uh, are mentioned in the caps notes. So most of the times uh, caps notes are not really reliable uh, to be followed. I know that you may not have any other thing to be followed, and this may be the most reliable thing or uh, something which is having some data, uh, which you assume that it is written by the visa officer, uh, but that is not correct. So uh, you may assume that uh, this is the right thing or this is the ultimate thing for you to give you clarity about your uh, uh, refusal, but that may not be the case. So to give you some uh, clarity, just see there, uh, this application was uh, assessed through Chinook. And this happens in most of the scenarios. Uh, now it is kind of a combination of two things. Chinook also, Chinook makes uh, uh, your profile in one line in, in an Excel sheet. You are one row, every detail is there. And at the end, visa officer check everything and uh, takes the decision. There can be one, one uh, soft decision as well for the visa officer. And uh, it is kind of a robotic thing. And later on, visa officer can decide, uh, can go with the Chinook as well, the Chinook's uh, decision as well, and uh, later on change the decision as well. So both the things are possible. If Chinook's uh, decision is soft, decision is uh, kind of uh, refusal, then visa officer can follow the same, or visa officer can change that uh, decision as well. In these two visa applications, uh, most of the decisions are completely made by Chinook. It happens. In study visa applications, there are visa, visa officers in, involved as well. So uh, there is some merit still left in study visa applications. In spouse visa applications, most of the applications are uh, uh, done based on merit. Some applications are there where the results are kind of, uh, uh, we are unable to understand the results. But in most cases, uh, most of the results in spouse visa applications are based on merit. In uh, uh, study visa applications, both the things are there. Uh, system is there. Chinook system is there. Uh, so some pro processing is automated and some process is uh, left with the visa officer, a discretionary power of visa officer that is also there. And at last, visa to visa applications, mostly, mostly, most of the applications are assessed by the Chinook and visa officers are really, really rare and uh, a very less kind of uh, involvement, human involvement is there in uh, visa to visa applications. So uh kind of uh, this is just to give you a clarity that uh, this is not entirely done by the visa officers and there are automated systems involved in the process so you cannot just completely rely on whatever you are getting from visa officer uh or uh, or on the refusal in the refusal letter whatever the reason is mentioned in the letter is mostly copied uh from other letters or everyone gets the same reason and if you are getting the refusal again and again, you can see that there is similar pattern and you are getting the same refusal reason again and again. So it is not done uh, kind of uh, by visa officer based on the merit of the application that uh, this is the reason I am giving, this is the reason I am giving, and this is the merit in the application. And that's why I'm giving this reason of refusal. So don't go by the reason of refusal letter written in the refusal letter and same thing happens with the caps notes as well i know that there are a lot many things written in the in the caps notes but still 
you cannot just blindly rely on these things and you cannot just uh, follow these things blindly so uh, this particular uh, these two caps notes i am showing you uh, this is just to show you that there are blunders not errors blunders in the caps notes as well uh, this highlighted area it shows that uh, student applied for pg certificate in project management at conestoga college but in reality and this student applied, never applied for Conestoga College Project Management. This student applied for Confederation College ICT program, Information Communication Technology program. So program uh, name is wrong, college name is wrong, and that's how they are writing the caps notes. So you can see how much reliable the caps notes are. And uh, there are so many other things as well, like uh, uh, like there are, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's written that uh, uh, you applied for a college where university applied for a, you know, uh, where student applied for a university. So those type of errors are uh, also there. It's mentioned that your uh, uh, score is not good where the student has more than seven CGPA and 70 to 75% marks. For them as well, it is written that your academic performance is not good. So all, all those type of errors are also there in CAPS notes. And you can see uh, the similar type of things. I have, you can watch my previous video and uh, follow the CAPS notes there as well. Similar type of things are written in all, all the CAPS notes, almost all the CAPS notes. And uh, if, the, if the name of the college and name of the program is wrong, then I guess all these things, whatever is written here must be wrong as well. So you cannot follow all those things blindly. You need to take decisions carefully based on your uh, education, based on your experience, then your program should be decided. Here, ICT program, I don't really recommend uh, to go for that program after becoming a project engineer. So from my side, the, uh, the recommendation is again to go for project management. That is the right program for, the, uh, for this student. But uh, even though the program choice is wrong, but uh, uh, Caps notes, these caps notes should not be uh, the reason of changing the program. So if you are going to follow the caps notes, even if uh, that lady applied for project management program, similar type of cap caps notes must be there for her. And uh, if she is going to follow these caps notes after applying for project management, she needs to change the program again. And if uh, you are going to follow caps notes again and again, uh, then you need to change your program after every refusal. So uh, that is not recommended. So uh, once your program is right and your college or university is right, your SOP documentation, if these things, everything is right, profile is fine, if everything is fine, then you need to reapply rather than following the caps notes blindly. Similar example uh, is of Anita. She also got her uh, visa. Uh, uh, this, this student got refusal and uh, she needs to reapply for her visa. This student, she, she got her visa with Algoma University Project Management Program. But when she applied, uh, she got one refusal from Algoma University Project Management. Before that, she applied for uh, this particular program. And uh, this program was not, I guess this was not in uh, 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 Harjin College. It was in uh, Humber College. And the name of the college is wrong here. Also, uh, in this particular application, she didn't even apply for this particular program. So just see that uh, uh, it's kind of a blunder when she has applied for Algoma University Project Management Program. And previously she applied for this particular program. And in the next CAPS notes, when she applied for Algoma University Project Management, still uh, she is getting a CAPS notes of previous uh, visa application. So this is a blunder. And uh, the same thing is mentioned, whatever she has uh, done till now, and uh, what kind of, uh, uh, why why they have uh, given her refusal. So all these things are mentioned here uh, for her. So, and in the next application, uh, this is her profile and she, in the next application, she got her visa. So if if we follow uh, this CAPS notes blindly, this was her third application, I guess, uh, second or third application. And in this application, she applied for uh, Algoma University Project Management. She got her refusal as well. And as soon as she got uh, her caps notes, after that, immediately after that, I guess after after a few uh, after a few days, she got her visa with Algoma University Project Management. So just read these caps notes. According to these caps notes, she shouldn't apply for this program. This program is uh, not a fit for her. And in the next application, she got her visa with the same program, same university. So you cannot follow the caps notes or the refusal letters blindly. 
and uh, especially when there are so many blunders and most of the things are copy pasted this part of uh, the caps notes and this is uh, generated through your uh, immigration forms this this uh, this information can be fetched really really easily i don't know how they can do this kind of blunders uh, i guess this is pasted from the previous caps notes when she applied for her previous uh, application and she applied for this particular uh, program but uh, whatever is written is, is also pasted. So uh, when they are writing caps notes, these are not written by the visa officer. When they are writing caps notes, just just pasting them from anywhere. I don't know how they are pasting or uh, whether computer is generating these caps notes. Uh, when the caps notes are, are written like this, then there is no point following these caps notes uh, blindly. So just take careful decisions. Uh, whenever you are applying for your visa application, don't follow caps notes or uh, refusal letters blindly and don't keep on changing your programs unnecessarily. If it is wrong, surely you need to change it. If if you are going for a smaller uh, kind of a private college or if the college is not good, uh, if it is not really uh, a good standard college for you, if you have already done master's, PhD or something and then you are going to a college, if you have done, uh, uh, if, if your age is above 35, then you are going to a college. So when you do this kind of things, then it surely decreases your visa chances. If you are going for a technical program after uh, uh, having five, seven, ten years of experience, then surely you should go for a better program, better university and public universities, uh, PG diploma, master's degree. So you need to correct yourself there uh, for sure. But no, don't do it unnecessarily. When you know that your program or university is right, in that case, surely you should stick and you should get your visa from there only. Just by following your CAPS notes or refusals, uh, if you are going to change your program, that is not going to help you. Uh, just a uh, bit out of line, uh, Anita, she got, uh, uh, these were the caps notes of Anita and this was the profile of Anita. Uh, I wanted to make a separate video for that uh, just because her profile was uh, really different. Uh, she was a stenographer and she went for project management program. Ultimately, she got her visa as well just to write her SOP uh, because that is not a routine position that we get uh, uh, usually. Uh, she is not in sales, marketing. IT construction, uh, not in this type of, uh, of profiles. So her profile was a bit different and to just uh, to write her SOP and to coin the position, uh, target position, I had to spend like more than one hour. So that was a different kind of profile. That's why I wanted to make video. So uh, with her caps notes, I am just uh, covering uh, her profile. And uh, this type of unique profiles also got visa with project management. So when you ask that, uh, uh, whether uh, it is possible to get visa with sales, finance, uh, see this profile. This is completely, completely out. So she is working uh, uh, in a government sector and uh, uh, her profile is just, she is stenographer. And uh, I had to spend a lot of time to kind of uh, relate her profile with project management because uh, usually there are, uh, she's, she's having a clerical position and there are no project management uh, positions in similar kind of profiles. So just, I needed to uh, put a lot of efforts to write SOP for her, but, but that was uh, really an interesting uh, position and SOP that I wrote for her. So she has done bachelor's, uh, bachelor of commerce 2014, and then she, she became stenographer and she is working uh, with the government department. And she finally her, uh, got her visa for Algoma University Project Management Program. So uh, it is possible to get visa with most of the profiles, uh, except one or two profiles like HR management or uh, maybe some some more different profiles. But in most profiles, with most profiles, I am able to get visa with project management. That's why I don't really experiment with the profiles. And I usually go with project management. Uh, there can be different other options uh, possible like MBA or uh, uh, some some other options as well uh, but when we are able to get a visa admission and visa with project management why to do uh, experimentation and uh, why to go for technical programs as well and this is a strong management program and uh, uh, for most cases we are going for that uh, when this type of profiles can also get with a visa with project management then uh, why to change it so uh, that's why i'm <laughs> i'm going and keeping uh, uh, the same uh, program as priority, even more than MBA, because getting admission in MBA is one hurdle uh, in public university, especially. And then the fee is really high. Uh, that's also a hurdle. And for most of the students, uh, 
uh, they are kind of uh, they just care about their visa and they don't care what kind of program they are getting so they are worried about their visa and their uh, pr that's it so ultimately they are going to get it and uh, that's why we are proceeding like this uh, i hope video must be informative for you uh, if so like subscribe and share the video as much as possible see you in next video